call it solving cubic inequalities. Okay, so this is another tricky part of this topic. There are actually multiple ways of thinking about this. Let me actually write down an example first, and then we'll think about that. Let's say we have to solve this inequality. Solve x minus two into minus x square plus four x minus 10 greater than zero. We want to solve this inequality. All right. Now, how do we think about it? First of all, there's a wrong way to do it. So I'll just write it down, write that down so that you know what not to do. It's a product and that's greater than zero. You're, you will be tempted to just do this, x minus two, greater than zero, or minus x squared plus four x minus 10 greater than zero. But that's wrong, you can't do that. That doesn't work for inequalities like this. It works for equations that if a product is equal to zero, then either the first factor is equal to zero or the second factor is equal to zero. But that does not work for inequality, right? Because so what you're doing here is it's it's basically saying that both of them have to be greater than zero for the product to be greater than zero. But you could also have two negative numbers for which the product is greater than zero. For example, if I have two numbers here, one possibility for making the product zero, product positive is that we have both positive numbers, but we also have two negative numbers that give us a product of greater than zero. So that's why we can't say that both are greater than zero. Okay, so this is not correct. You can't do this. All right, now, what do we do then? If we can't split it like that, how do we go about solving this? First of all, there's one method that uses arguments similar to what we have done here. Okay, what we've done here that we factor, look at the factors, look at the turning points, and then based on that, we try to solve that somehow. Okay, I'm not going to do that. Uh, there is a way of doing doing it this way, but I've experienced that a lot of students do not give complete working for that method in the exam. They miss some parts of it, and then they end up losing marks for that. And that's a bit more confusing as well. So I'm going to skip that method altogether. Let's discuss one method that is very similar to what we used to do in modulus inequalities. Because that is was a general method that works for every kind of inequality. That is what we're going to what we're going to use here. And that can solve any kind of cubic inequality as well. Let's see how that works like. So remember how we used to solve modulus inequalities? If we had an equation, the first thing we used to do, if we had an inequality, the first thing we used to do was, we used to say, let's treat it as an equation. That's how we start. Treat this as an equation. So this is how we're going to solve cubic inequalities. Treat the inequality as an equation first. Okay? Treat it as an equation. Now, can we solve this equation? We already have factors. We can say either x minus two equals zero or minus x squared plus four x minus 10 equals zero. The first one gives us x equals two. Let's solve the second one. This is x squared minus four x plus 10 equals zero. If we were to solve this equation, uh, can we factorize? We can't. Let's use the quadratic formula minus b minus into minus four plus minus square root of minus four whole squared minus four into one into 10 divided by two into one. And you figure out you have no solutions for this. You have no real solution for this. So you're not getting anything from here. You've got only one answer, which is x equals two. So if this was an equation, x equals two would be a solution for that. All right. Now, what you do after this is 
you draw a number line this is your critical point and that critical point is 2 here it divides your number line into two regions one to the right of 2 and one to the left of 2 and now you need to see which side of this number satisfies this inequality okay now what is this inequality uh, greater than 0 just input take one value to the left of 2 one value to the right of 2 one easy value to work with on the left side would be 0 and we could take another take a value on the right as well let's take 3 for instance and let's input these numbers in that inequality got written on top x minus 2 so that's 0 minus 2 Into minus x squared plus minus u squared plus four into zero. That also becomes zero. Minus ten greater than zero. What do we get from this? Minus two into minus ten. That's greater than zero. And from this, we're getting twenty greater than zero. Is that correct? That is correct. That means this reason is going to be correct. Okay. Now. It's going to be pretty obvious that the second region is not going to be correct here, but you're, going, you're still going to do the working because just to because you need to be sure that you haven't done any mistake here. So you need to make sure that the second number is giving you an incorrect answer. Let's try that. Let's input three there. Put three in place of x. That gives you three minus two into minus three squared. Remember. Minus is outside the square. This is going to be minus nine, plus four into three, minus ten. That's greater than zero. That was the inequality. Let's simplify this. We have one outside. Inside we got minus nine, plus twelve, minus ten, greater than zero, and this is giving us minus nineteen plus twelve, which is minus seven, greater than zero. And we know that is incorrect. Uh, is the working fine here? Minus nine plus twelve minus ten. Okay, all right. So you're getting minus seven. That's greater than zero. This is turning out to be incorrect. So on the number line, this is correct, and this region is incorrect. Incorrect. So what is going to be your final answer then? It's everything towards the left of two. So you say the answer is x less than two. This is the solution to this inequality. Make sense? If you were to do x minus two greater than zero here, using that incorrect method that we discussed in the, in the beginning, it would have given you x greater than two, and that would have been wrong anyway. If by chance you got the correct answer using this incorrect method, you will still not get marks for that because that would be incorrect. Okay, maybe one out of three, so you can't do that. You have to follow this whole process. Acha, by the way, in modulus inequalities, it was not necessary to show this working, the number line working. If you could do it mentally. That was acceptable. You could just write down the final answer with using mental calculation as well. But you'll find out when you have cubic inequalities, they will always ask you to justify your answer, just to make sure you're not getting the correct answer just by guessing. Okay, or kuto kani lagra. So they will require you to do that working. Let me show that to you. Inequality. Mm. Can you find an inequality? Yeah, the very first question. You see, it says solve the inequality p of x greater than zero, justifying your answer. It's going to be important to justify your answer. Okay, justify your answer. That means you've got to show complete working, complete reasoning. So you'll have to show this number line and then show this working. That this region is coming out correct and this region is coming out incorrect. That is going to be important for cubic inequalities like this. Okay. Now 
let's do one example on this before we end that then concludes our polynomials topic for the most part there is actually one question that i still want to do let me see if we should do that today or uh okay so let's be quick about it and do one question right now in fact two questions right now okay so can we extend it by five minutes yeah we can do that extend it to 7 35 so that we can just wrap this topic up and we don't have to spend time on this tomorrow let's do this example first this is question number five from the worksheet question number five from the worksheet let's have a look at this Actually, I talked to you about this already that we could uh, extend the P3 class timings by a little. So yeah, we will do that today. We'll do that for five to 10 minutes to complete this topic today because we missed a number of classes already. We need to make up for them. So we are going to extend this class a little. We'll do two more questions. One this and another more after that, okay? And these are very important questions. This one is on inequality and the other one is from a recent paper. And that's really, really important. So you need to make sure that you are here for that. The polynomial, this is denoted by P of X. It's given that P of X is divisible by two X square minus three X plus three. Divisible by this, what does that mean? It's a factor. Two X square minus three X plus three is a factor, okay? We need to find the value of A given this information. Now, it's a quadratic factor. We can't use remainder theorem unless we could somehow factorize this. You can think about it. Can we factorize this? Is, is it possible to break the middle term? It's not. So you'll have to use long division. Okay. Let's use long division and see what that gives us. 4x cubed minus 4x squared plus 3x plus A. This is what the polynomial is. We want to divide it by 2x squared minus 3x plus 3. Now let's follow through the long division process. 2x squared multiplied by 2x is going to give us 4x cubed. 2x into that whole thing, that's 4x cubed minus 6x squared plus 6x. Let's change the signs. Minus plus minus, this gets cancelled. And this gives us 2x square minus 3x plus a. What do you have to multiply 2x square by to get 2x square? By plus 1. So you've got plus 1 here. 1 into that whole thing, that gives us 2x square minus 3x plus 3. Change the signs. Minus plus minus. This gets cancelled. This also gets cancelled. And we're left with a minus 3. Now, this is the remainder. Now, since it was a factor, the remainder has to be equal to zero. So we put this equal to zero. A minus three equals zero, and that gives us A equal to three. So the value of A that we've got is equal to three. All right, now it's good that you've done long division because now we've found the other factor of that polynomial as well, which is two X plus one. It says when A has this value, solve this inequality, P of X less than zero, justifying your answer, okay? You have to solve this inequality, P of X less than zero. Now, what is that polynomial? Let me write that here first, 4X cube minus 4X square plus 3X plus A, that is less than zero. We have the value of A now, that's three. Let's put that here. This is the polynomial that we've got. Now, how do we solve this inequality? We can factorize this. We already have one factor. The other factor is two X plus one. Now let's write that down here. Two X square minus three X plus three, whole multiplied by two X plus one, is less than zero. So 
this is what the factorized form looks like. Okay. Now, what do we do after this? We treat this as an equation. We say 2x square minus 3x plus 2, sorry, plus 3. Whole multiplied by 2x plus 1 equals 0. Solve this equation to find that critical point. This gives us 2x square minus 3x plus 3 equals 0 or 2x plus 1 equals 0. Solve this, you'll find out it does not have any solutions. That is actually going to be the case in most of these cubic, cubic inequalities that you'll be solving. You, will only, you won't be getting anything from the quadratic factors generally, but you can just try that. Minus b, that's minus into minus 3 plus minus square root of minus 3 whole squared minus 4 into 2 into 3 divided by 2 into 2. You figure out that the thing inside the square root is negative, so it has no solution. So the only solution that you solution that you've got from this is x equals minus one over two. This is that critical point now. You draw a number line. Now it's important to show this process. Draw a number line. This is minus one over two. Take one number to the left of it, one number to the right of it. One number to the left of minus one over two, we could take minus one here. One number to the right of minus one over two, we could take zero here. Let me write down the inequality. Let me use this one. It's easier to just input in the original inequality, 4x cubed minus 4x squared plus 3x plus 3, that's less than zero. Just input minus one once in that and then zero and see which of them satisfies. Four into minus one cube minus four into minus one squared plus three into minus one plus three is less than zero. What do we get from this? Minus four, minus four, minus three plus three, that is less than zero. And that's minus eight less than zero. That's correct. Let's try the region. On the right as well, if you input zero, you get zero minus zero plus zero plus three less than zero, and that gives you three less than zero. That's incorrect. So that means the region on the left side here is going to be your answer. This region is correct, this is incorrect. So the final answer therefore for this reason is x less than minus one over two. That is your final answer here.